Good evening. Good evening and welcome to this Christmas Eve service. My name is Reverend Carolyn Vettierno. I'm the Senior Minister of All Souls Unitarian Universalist Congregation in New London, Connecticut. And now, of course, we welcome people from far and away. Welcome on this silent, holy night. With me tonight, I am so grateful for the company of Reverend Caitlin O'Brien, the Associate Minister at All Souls, and her son, Liam, who will be lighting our chalice. Welcome, Liam. And Kadlicek is our ministerial intern. Jesse Edwards will take care of all the technical needs for this service. Tammy offered her gifts of creativity with the images you will see throughout the service. Bill Broth and Gary Elliott are two gifted, gifted accompanists will both be with us and a heavenly host of singing angels will be joining us through the evening. Welcome all. We begin with a centering poem by the Reverend Gretchen Haley. She is a minister of a congregation in Fort Collins, Colorado. And so let us uh, center in, bring ourselves to the places where we are coming together as we begin the service. Tonight, we celebrate the relentless presence of love, love, unconditional and perfect, love born in the world again and again, love ready to heal and forgive and unite across all differences and divides, love born in each of us and offering itself to all love that will not give up. Love that cannot stop making room for you here in this ancient story, told and retold across centuries and cultures, a tale of people seeking shelter from the cold after a long journey, people met by kindness in the silent night. Whatever the state of your heart, weary, wild, filled with wonder. The call to rejoice rings out for all to be held in this hope that love is not done with its work on this life, that in this world, love, newborn, is just getting started. So let us kindle once again the light of hope and celebrate Christmas once more. Welcome to All Souls, where all souls are welcome. I hear you saying it together. You are joyfully called this night to worship. Every year, we begin this service with the most joyful of Christmas carols, angels we have heard on high. And tonight, we welcome Becky Noreen, Lee Teague, Nick Avento, Charlie Shop, Bob Bunting, and Sue Frankowitz, who will lead us in song. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains in reply. Echoing their joyous strains, Gloria in excelsis Deo, Gloria in excelsis Deo, shepherds by this you by these songs of happy cheer what great brightness did you see what glad tidings did you hear gloria in excelsis deo Oh, 
Thank you so much. So beautiful. I'd like to invite my son, Liam, to light our chalice, the symbol of our Unitarian Universalist faith. Please speak with Liam the words in our order of worship, and then he will light the chalice. I will light candles this Christmas. Candles of joy, despite all sadness. Candles of hope, where despair keeps watch. Candles of courage, where fear is ever present. Candles of peace for tempest-tossed days. Candles of grace to ease heavy burdens. Candles of love to inspire all my living. Candles that will burn all year long. Thank you, Liam. So good to have you with us in worship. <laughs> the following is a video reflection using the words of Reverend Victoria Safford. The video was created by the Foothills Unitarian Church of Fort Collins, Colorado. The congregation served by Gretchen Haley, whose poem we started off with in the service. With permission, we share, now is the moment of magic. Now is the moment of magic, when the whole round earth turns again toward the sun. And here's a blessing. The days will be longer and brighter now even before the winter settles in to chill us. Now is the moment of magic, when people, beaten down and broken, with nothing left but misery and candles and their own clear voices, kindle tiny lights and whisper secret music. And here's a blessing. The dark universe is suddenly illuminated by the lights of the menorah, suddenly ablaze with the lights of the kinara, and the whole world is glad and loud with winter singing. Now is the moment of magic, when an eastern star beckons the ignorant toward an unknown goal. And here's a blessing may find nothing in the end but an ordinary baby, born at midnight, born in poverty. And the baby's cry, like bells ringing, makes people wonder as they wander through their lives what human love might really look like, sound like, feel like. Now is the moment of magic. And here's a blessing. We already possess all the gifts we need. We've already received our presence. Ears to hear music, eyes to behold lights, hands to build true peace on earth and to hold each other tight in love. Yes, we tell one another stories to revisit what love looks like and feels like and sounds like. Anne will now share the ancient story from the Gospel of Luke.
And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And Joseph also went up from Galilee unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them <clears throat> in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of God stood before them and the glory of God shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among all people. So ends the reading. And now the message in poetry with Meeting the Messiah by Jeffrey Siminkiewicz. When we scale at last the walls which our hardened hearts have built, then we come face to face, finally, with the blessedness of one another. Then we see that these struggling fellow pilgrims with whom we share this space are no longer robbers, pirates, and thieves, but deepest friends, most intimate souls. To see this creation with the eyes of God means seeing with the eyes of peace. It means finding ways to bind up the broken, even when the world says it can't be done. To scale these walls of alienation and despair means living our lives in truth, with justice, neither denying the holy gifts of our hearts and souls, nor hoarding them like miser's gold. It is the simplest call of all, in essence, to open ourselves to God, we first open ourselves to one another. Each day we live in hope, in the deepest possibilities of our dreams and of our visions in this life, we dwell as well in heaven. Then it is that we will turn and greet one another knowing at long last the simple blessing of standing fully in the presence of another true Messiah, face to face with one like us, a beaming holy child of God. small child in the land of a thousand one small dream of a savior tonight one small hand reaching out to the starlight one small city of life oh Smiling in the 
stone. See his mother praising his father. See the tiny islands fall. One small light from the flame of a candle. One small light from a city of mind. One small light. From the stars in the endless night, one small light from a face, sweet baby's face. Oh, see the shepherds kneeling before him. See the kings on bended knee. See the mother praising his father. See the blessed infant sleep. One small child in a land of a thousand. One small dream of a savior tonight. One small hand reaching out to the starlight. One small city of light. Oh, 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 oh. We will now enter into our offering. Offering contributions this evening will be donated to the Minister's Discretionary Fund. This fund serves individuals in need within and beyond all souls. Additionally, donations from this fund are made to organizations that further Unitarian Universalist principles. As always, contributions can be made by Venmo, PayPal, or by mailed check. And please clarify that your contribution goes to the, ministry, the Minister's Discretionary Fund, or MDF. Please speak with me the words in our order of worship. We give to the minister's discretionary fund. Our work weaves the fabric of love called community. To this end, we dedicate ourselves and this our offering. The offering will now be gratefully received. for all that you have given and all that you've sacrificed. We thank you. Thank you, Caitlin. And thank you, Karen Ether Waring and Kyle Murray for that beautiful interpretation of a lovely song placed in the middle of this holy night. Thank you. The days have passed through our hearts and souls to bring us none too gently to this holy silent night, as I keep saying. Long ago, William Butler Yeats wrote a poem titled The Second Coming. It's not a poem I would ever have thought to reference on Christmas Eve, but 2020 is nothing if not a trickster. Here we are 
as Yates said, slouching towards Bethlehem. Guided by a star that is less hydrogen and helium and more determination and resilience. So tonight, I will speak of the stuff we carry in our modest survival packs upon our slouching backs. I receive an email from the wise man, George Fargo who just in the nick of time reminds me of a few important things when he writes, this season is a big change of what we are used to, but when a baby wants to be born, there isn't anything that will stop the birth. We will not be together this year to sing those wonderful songs, but we will be together in memory of this most wonderful time of the year. I could hear George's voice. Now we've got to think back on all the wonderful times together with loved ones, like those wonderful times at 19 J Street with everyone singing their hearts out, making the windows bend with the joy of the singing. George concludes, you are with me in many ways, Carolyn. Stay safe. And right behind George comes another wise man, Bruce Cummings whose gift is the just right poem he shares at the board meeting. I will share part of it with you now. It's entitled A Blessing for Traveling in the Dark, and it's by Jan Richardson, beautiful poet. She writes, I do not know what these shadows ask of you, what they might hold that means you good or ill. It is not for me to reckon whether you should linger or you should leave. But this is what I can ask for you, that in the darkness there be a blessing, that in the shadows there be a welcome, that in the night you will be encompassed by the love that knows your name. So ends the reading. In March and April, we did not know what the shadows were asking of us. But now, on Christmas Eve, I think we have a better idea. And in that knowing, we have witnessed over and over again, all these many months since the shutdown, the dawn of redeeming grace. For in the darkness, these many months, there has been blessing. Over and over again, there has been blessing and beauty in this, the most sorrowful of years. But truly, out of every year's 365 nights, without exception, Christmas Eve is the most sorrowful. That's why the Christmas Eve service is so beautiful. It has nothing to do with me or anyone else who crafts that service it is so powerful because all who slouch toward sanctuaries the world over bring with us our particular sorrow to find that that sorrow is held by shattering beauty, held in mystery that is story and song and twinkle lights and candlelight and poinsettias, held by a stubborn joy that is ever green. Only the little kids, the littlest and youngest among us bring an uncomplicated joy to the sanctuary and all the rest of us carry this beautiful sorrow. Tempered and coaxed by the force of angels, we sing through our tears. And our tears this year are generous. Here is the story that presented itself for telling this Christmas Eve. It is the story of one tiny moment that is the definition of redeeming grace. That is a love that saves us. I am lucky enough to have gone to college. I am lucky enough to have made friends there and then with people who are very much for me here and now. For 40 plus years, we have journeyed together, sometimes walking upright and sure, and at other times, slouching 
for the weight of sorrow. And in August, there was devastating sorrow. Kathy died, Dave's beloved wife, and hardly an in-law to the rest of us. She was one of us, vanquished by a brutal cancer. We could hardly breathe for the weight of this loss, none more than, of course, our beloved Dave. And then came the cruel conundrum of how to mourn in this time of compassionate distance, how to offer comfort, how to circle round. Decisions are made. It will be a graveside service with an outdoor shiva right after and for the days that follow. Dave entrusts me to officiate the service. Whoever can be there will make their way. This after months of sheltering in place, the place where we need to be is at the cemetery with Dave, with Kathy, now of blessed memory. And one by one, the mourners arrive. We greet each other in the parking lot and masks can't cover the shock, the grief that is on full display. There is a force field around us that both stops us from embracing, but also beams forth a powerful love. I say over and over again to others and to myself, we have 40 years of hugs that will carry us through this day. And so after we gather and greet, it is time to return to our cars to drive through the narrow cemetery paths we contemplate and then decide that Nancy and Vincent will drive the short distance with me with windows open and masks in place. I drive near the head of the long, long line and the trail of cars stops. Cemetery staff will instruct us when we may take our places graveside. And in the meantime, we wait. And in this waiting, a thousand scenes pass through memory, all of which ask how in the world we find ourselves here in this bizarre moment, in this bizarre truth, in this impossibly bizarre year. How do we possibly hold this sorrow? And every car in this long, sad line is a human, alive, stunned, with a heart pounding with the weight of these questions for which there are no answers. These thoughts are stopped cold, these memories stilled, as Dave emerges from seemingly nowhere and slowly walks up the hill to Kathy's final resting place. He pauses for a moment, long enough that this image will be emblazoned in my memory forevermore. My steady gaze to my left does not leave Dave as I involuntarily throw my hand out to my right in what I can only describe as a moment of near panic. In some recess of my mind, I, and I know that I do not know to what I am reaching. I cannot expect in this bizarre year that Nancy will take my hand. But right now, in the small universe inside this car, all thought is suspended for these two old friends and our hands clasp. They clasp in panic, in desperation, in an assurance of strength, and yes, in redeeming grace, saving love. We do not look at each other. We are both still holding Dave so fiercely. And while we hold on to him and to each other so tightly, we remember everything. In that one tiny moment, there is an entire lifetime of friendship. In the shadows in which that tiny moment dwells, there is a blessing, a welcome in which two friends, and, and actually it wasn't just the two of us, it wasn't just me and Nancy, it was all of us knowing that we are held by the love 
that knows our names. And so on this silent, holy night, let this be a blessing. The assurance that in the dark, we gather up what has always been and will always be. That love's redeeming grace is ours to have and to hold in sickness and in health, for better or for worse, and in the midst of global pandemics. And it will get us through this bizarre time to the time when we will bend the windows with joyful singing. By the strength of memory and by the strength of our communion, we are with each other in many ways, as George said to me. Don't forget, remember everything. Merry Christmas, dear, dear souls. Amen. I invite you to enter into a spirit of prayer and meditation. Spirit of truth, beauty, and love in all the ways that you are known in which we rest this holy night. We pray for the peace of Christmas to stir in hearts and souls evermore and evermore, that humankind will seek and find a powerful silence to quiet the din of the troubles of our age. May we glean trust and courage from the ancient story honored this night. May we trust and may trust and courage be the foundation of the stories we live in the days to come. May we give of ourselves in the spirit of Jesus, whose birth we celebrate and honor this silent, holy night. And may the congregation say, amen. Amen. I now invite you into the Christmas Eve ritual of lighting candles together in silence, and then singing Silent Night. We will light our candles here 
And please join in at home, knowing that though we are apart, still together, we share our light of peace and truth, hope and love, and together that light burns bright. So let us all light our candles now. We'll hold them for a minute of silence together and then begin to sing. you to hold your candle high as we enter into this silent night together. From this moment, may we go forth 
as the poet said, opening ourselves to one another. That in each day we live in hope, the deepest possibilities of our dreams and our visions in this life. Go in peace in this most complicated of Christmas Eves after a most complicated of years, shadowy darkness, and still remember that within it all, there have been blessings and redeeming grace. Go in peace and return with great joy. Amen. I would like to just say one more thing before Caitlin offers, uh, shares a couple of announcements. And that is, many of you received um, gifts of Magi bags and in them there was a jingle bell as well as the candle for this evening's service. Ring those bells. Go out into the night, the silent holy night. Ring those bells, hold up your light and know that the world is receiving that joyful sound and that beautiful image of light. We're there together. Caitlin. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you for a message that honors honesty and beauty and holds it all together, woven finely for all of us as a community. And thank you to the musicians who brought beauty to our service tonight. A couple announcements. This year's virtual paper bag pageant will premiere on YouTube at 11 a.m. on Christmas morning with a live chat Thereafter, it can be enjoyed at any time, of course. Also on Christmas Day, there will be a sharing circle at two o'clock in the afternoon. All souls are welcome to share the feelings and the traditions and memories that they bring to this holiday. Please be in touch with Suzanne Colton Carey for the Zoom link. You can also call in with a conventional phone and Suzanne can give you that number. As part of a Connecticut UU church tour this Sunday, the 27th, All Souls is visiting the Unitarian Society of Hartford virtually. Diane Daniels, who has preached at All Souls several times, will be worship leader. We will be joining several other Connecticut congregations to honor and celebrate the African-American holiday Kwanzaa. And we'll be visiting with the Unitarian Society of New Haven on January 3rd. Check your e-blast for details. And now let us enjoy Bill's postlude, Carol of the Bells. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> 